international missions delegation we've ever had at any icon in 25 years. And that's amazing because it costs a lot to come here, first off, yeah. Um, second, you know, it's just we're able to just be together, united, together with the rest of our brothers and sisters here, just being able to share our love for God. And it's so beautiful to know and, and being able to celebrate this anniversary together, brothers and sisters. I've been in the community for 23 years, okay? I joined in 1995. Uh, I joined Youth for Christ in Vancouver by the forceful, by the forceful hand of my parents. Okay? So they forced me, all right? And you know, it was very, it, I was very touched and excited, but I wasn't active right away. But you know, the Lord always works in His time. 2002, I'll give you a quick timeline. 2002, I joined Singles for Christ. Not because I wanted to, but because I needed to. All right? So again, I was forced, not by my parents, but, my, but, my, but by my couple coordinator. Okay? So I joined in 2002. And then, in 2004, I answered the call to be a full-time pastoral worker. And brothers and sisters, this year is my 14th year in full-time pastoral work. So it's been a while. Um, who here, there's a couple of people here who are also missionaries during that time as well. And I'm glad to be able to share this moment with them as well. Brothers and sisters, um, this session is gonna be uh, a little different, all right? Because we've been talking about being joyful, you know, reminiscing and all these things, but in this session, I hope you guys have Kleenex, okay? Because I don't know how to speak Tagalog, so there's gonna be some nose bleeding, I think. It's okay? You guys okay with that? Okay. So, because I can't really speak it, okay? Don't judge me, all right? But during the first session, we remembered how much of a gift this community is to us, right? From Shock's, uh, Kree Shock's uh, uh, session last night, we remembered all the great things that we were able to witness and do throughout the 25 years, and we were able to just look back at the good times, okay? We were able to look back at the good times the community has blessed us with. And if you think about it, brothers and sisters, in this community, most of us here, if not all of us here, have found our closest friends. Amen? Amen. Who here have found their closest friends here in the community? Raise your hand. Woo! Who here has found their best friend in the community? Raise your hand. Woo! Who here has found their Gigi in this community? Raise your hand. It's okay to be single, you know that? It's okay to be single, right? Like having a relationship or having a GG. You know, even if, you have, even if you're single, you can still have a GG. You still have a GG. You have a great God, amen? You have a great God. But for real, you're still single. That's the reality. That's the reality. But being single, like I said, isn't, you know, it's not the be make all, be all, whatever, or, or it's not the hardest thing. Actually, being single means you're strong enough to wait for what you deserve. So if you have a single friend beside you, say, true love waits. and sources of joy. We should be joyful, brothers and sisters. If you look around 
here just alone, there's so many things to be joyful. Even the person beside you, we should be joyful to be sitting beside that person. Why? Because that person should also be a source of joy. Amen? And we should never forget that. That's why Queen Shock, uh, or Brother Shock, um, mentioned that and told us to remember. We have to remember those things so that we can remember to be joyful. I want to share with you the sources of my joy in my life, okay? I want to show you a picture of... <clears throat> this is a picture of my source of joy. Bang. Bang. This is my wife, my wife Cheryl. She is not only the source of my joy, she is my rock. She has supported me throughout my whole missionary uh, life. And uh, you know, I really honor her. A lot of people always say, oh bro, I honor you, um, you know, for, you know, for being able to, uh, you know, go on mission without your wife sometimes, da da da. But really, I honor her for allowing me to be on, on uh, to go on mission. And she is more of a missionary than I am because she takes care of these three blessings as well. One of my three kids. My daughter with the cat ears, that's Leanna. She's eight years old. My middle guy right there, my only boy, his name is Miles. And my youngest, um, I like to call her my surprise because we weren't expecting to have her, but you know, God blessed her with us. And her name is Adele. And these guys are such a joy to my life. You know what? With the busyness of, of life in general, I'm guilty because sometimes I forget to enjoy them. I'm busy, uh, you know, taking them to different, different extracurricular activities, uh, teaching them this, teaching them that, and sometimes I forget to really just enjoy them. And these guys all the time, especially when I come home from mission, never fails to come home, when I come home, to welcome me with a big hug and say, welcome home, Dad. Even before I left, they prayed over me before I left, you know? And I think that's a beautiful thing, brothers and sisters. Yeah, let's give it up for the Lord, for my sources of joy. My family, I'll show a picture of my family. This is us. And uh, if you ever follow me on Instagram, um, it's, uh, I'm gonna give you my Instagram name, no, I'm not just joking. But if, I, if you ever follow me on Instagram, my hashtag that I use for my family is Team Acosta 0531. And the 0531 means that's the anniversary of, the wedding anniversary of me and my wife. And that was the day we became a team, okay? And it's a constant reminder of why I should be joyful, okay? Why I should be joyful. Our families should be a reason we should be joyful. The family that I have built is a reason, is a constant reminder of why I should be joyful, brothers and sisters. It's easy for us to remember the joyful things in our lives, brothers and sisters, but we should also be aware of the moments that we are not so joyful, okay? Because they also play a role on who we are as a person. In this session this evening, brothers and sisters, I want us to journey together. I want us to journey together, remembering what makes us joyful, and I also want you to remember what robs us of our joy as well. Because there are many things that keep us from being happy, from being joyful. There's many joyful robbers out there. We want to remember those times and those things that make us lose our joy. So can you come and be on a journey in this session, brothers and sisters? So this year, our theme came from St. Paul. It was a letter from St. Paul to Timothy. And in this letter, he said to, uh, St. Paul wrote to Timothy and he said, I want you to rekindle your gift. Okay? Rekindle your gift. And if you know St. Paul, in all his letters that he wrote, brothers and sisters, he was in jail every time he wrote a letter. Okay? And if you think about being in prison, being in jail, it's not a very joyful place. And it was very, very hard for him 
for St. Paul to keep a posture of joy while he was writing these letters, but he still did. Why? Because he really guarded his joy with everything that he had. This guy, St. Paul was beaten, he was stoned, he was everything that you can imagine, and yet he's still joyful and still able to write these letters to the Colossians, to, the, uh, to Timothy, and all the rest of the letters in the Bible, okay? Um, look it up, guys. Read your, do you have your Bible? Oh, shame on you, just joking. Okay, but the thing is, brothers and sisters, why I'm sharing this is we should also guard our joy. Okay? We should also guard our joy. Whether we have been in SFC for just a few months or for more than half of your life, we have to remember that there will always be something that will rob us of our joy. Okay? We're celebrating 25 years. And maybe some of us here have only been in SFC for only a couple of months. But if you think about it, brothers and sisters, everyone who is here is part of the, last, the past 25 years. You are, you are part of this celebration. Whether you have been in SFC for only one month, or a couple of days, or whatnot, you are still part of this 25 years. And I want you to remember, brothers and sisters, when we lose our joy, it's not because serving God is hard and it's stressful. It's because temptations will always be lurking around us. Amen? Temptations will always be lurking around us. Who here has ever been tempted by the devil before? Raise your hands. Yes. All of us should be raising our hands. We are not, um, we are not uh, prone to not being tempted by the evil one. And there are many things, brothers and sisters, that make us lose our joy, and a lot of obvious ones that we see each day. What are some obvious things that make us lose our joy? We have the stresses of work, right? We have bills to pay. Wow, yep. We have troubles or problems at home with family, right? That makes us lose our joy. And I think a major one here in SFC, correct me if I'm wrong, is relationships. Because not only the relationships um, with friends and whatnot, but especially the special relationships that we have, especially with the breakups. The breakups rob us of our joy. There is not one person I know that has been heartbroken and been joyful after. Doesn't exist. No? If it does, please come to the front and I want to know your secret. But those are the type of things that can rob us, the obvious ones, right? Breakups, heartbreaks. But not only that, also the fear of not being in a relationship. That could rob us of our joy as well brothers and sisters. But then there's the not so obvious ones. Okay? There's also the not so obvious ones. And we will outline these in this session. This evening. Oh, and there goes my session. Oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. Let the spirit lead, right? That was a blank paper anyway. I don't need that paper actually. So I'm just joking. But the, the points that I will be um, highlighting here in this session, brothers and sisters, these are the things that have quietly crept, that have quietly crept into our thoughts, and into our actions, and into our service as well. These temptations are robbing us of our joy, of our everyday joy that we should be experiencing. Okay? So the first one, brothers and sisters, is an attitude of I alone can do all things. I alone can do all things. Or in other words, a, a messianic complex. Okay, if you guys know what a messianic complex is, it's kind of like a savior kind of attitude, like I'm the savior. You know, it's all me, you know? Only me, I can do it, right? I have all the gifts, those type of things. When we make service our main identity, we have this kind of mentality, this messianic complex. When we think that we are the only ones capable of doing things, who here is guilty of that? Or ever been guilty of that? Okay, before I move forward, 
if I could just ask everyone to just be real with each other in this session, okay? Let's be real with each other and be honest with each other as well. We think also with this messianic complex that we are better than others, okay? That we are better than others in our servants, in our, in our service, in our talents, in everything that we are doing. Even the times when we ask for help, we tend to observe every task or how the task is being done. And if the task is not being done the way you want it, then you do it yourself. Right? If that is the case, brothers and sisters, that is pretty much a lack of trust. That's what it is. I remember, who here is a transitioner from YFC? Raise your hand. There's lots, lots. And I am also one of those transitioners from YFC back in the day. And obviously we all know this, transition is not easy, okay? Transition is not easy, especially if you were a top leader in YFC where everyone looked up to you and you were so cool, you know? You are like the best guitar player, you're the best speaker, everyone know your name, and then you come into SFC and no one knows you at all, you know? And it's like, you're back to square one, one again. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I joined YFC, that's how I felt. Everyone knew me in YFC, and then when I joined SFC, everyone was like, who are you? You know, it doesn't matter who you are actually, you know? And then I felt this like, Psh, SFC's boring anyway, you know? The way they worship, oh my gosh. <laughs> OMG, man. Like, speed it up a bit, man. You know? Who's the drummer? Right? We're so judgmental. And even, even the, the topics and the teachings, you know, that they talk about. A lot of new wives sees, oh my gosh, they're talking about relationships again. Oh my gosh, you know? That's all they talk about, relationships. I'm not even there yet, man. You know? Well, if you're, you're gonna be there, bro. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna end up being there. And it's, it's a lot of judging, brothers and sisters. A lot of, I could do better than that guy. I could speak better than that dude. This SFC event is far more boring than the way we do things in YFC. Kind of deal. A messianic complex. Thinking we're better than others. Better than other things. Yes, transition is hard, brothers and sisters. And you know, especially from YFC to SFC, and any transition really. But we have to remember, brothers and sisters, whatever, wherever the Lord is transitioning to us, it's the same spirit. Amen? Yes. It's the same spirit. The same God that we are serving. It's the same God we're serving. There's no difference. Okay? Yes, maybe it's a little bit more slower tempo. Okay? And maybe they like talking about relationships. And maybe they eat out a lot, you know, in SFC. But it's the, it's the same spirit. Okay? It's the same spirit. Next is, the next point is, we are seemingly good. Okay? Seemingly good. Or an altruistic evil. Alright? Altruistic evil. Kind of saying like, I'll make this, I'll make this look like a gift, or is this really a gift? So, when we think we are doing good, in this point, brothers and sisters, when we think we're doing good, but if we actually look more deeper into it, we're actually causing more harm than what, what is going on, okay? We're actually causing more hurt than what we think we are doing, all right? And sometimes we do this to the people we even pastor ourselves. And we may not even think, see that's how the evil one works. We may not even think it's bad, but actually, we might be hurting others, even the people that we pastor, right? And I think this morning during Mass, 
um, the Bishop of Kalaogan, right? Bishop Anbo, Anbo? He nailed it. He nailed it, right? When he was sharing about his feelings about what's going on in his diocese, right? And I could see, when I was, when I was listening to him, I could see the passion in the way he was speaking about it, right? Not only just the passion, but the frustration as well. That these people who are supposed to be protecting, you know, protecting the people of the diocese, or just even the people in general, they're being killed for the sins that they are doing, right? Pretty much judging their, a book by its cover. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, we are guilty of that as well, right? I want to ask you guys a question, and I want you guys, you don't have to answer it, but I want you guys to think about it though. How have we treated our fellow brothers and sisters who are struggling with SSA? How many of us have treated our brothers and sisters who are single parents? Or who have gotten pregnant? Or the ones who have been divorced? Or widowed? How about those brothers and sisters who are dealing with an addiction? How have you treated them? Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we just need to love. That's all we are called to do is just to love. And Bishop said that earlier, right? It's a simple act of love we have to do. He was so frustrated, I could hear in his voice, he was saying, I'm supposed to be the shepherd and they're killing my sheep. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being in his shoes? Think about your household for all those people who are in a household, right? And you're supposed to be caring for a household and somebody is hurting your members. And we're just standing there watching, right? And all those people that I've mentioned, our brothers and sisters who have SSA, who are single parents, do, not, do they not deserve the same love that we do by God? Right? I think we have to look beyond this altruistic evil that has clouded our mind, that has blinded us of what real love is. Not looking at people with judgmental eyes, but more loving eyes, amen? The next one is, there is nothing I can do, okay? There is nothing I can do. A fearful humility, right? That you can't be a gift. When I mention messianic complex, if messianic complex is somebody who can do everything, right? Who, think, who thinks they can do it all, then fearful humility is thinking that you can't do anything. All right? You can't do anything or you're not good enough to do anything. This, brothers and sisters here, this makes us no longer see the gifts that we are able to share. All right? This makes us blinded that we're not able to share the gifts that we know that we have. All of us here has a gift to share. Okay? Go to the person beside you, say, you have a gift to share, bro. You have a gift to share, sis. You know, when we fall into this attitude, we end up saying, I don't know if this is familiar, but I'm gonna try saying this, but we end up saying, you know, sila na lang. You know? Sila na lang. I mean, it sounds like sila na lang, right? Sila na, na lang, all right? Or, mas magaling sila sa akin. Or, sila muna. Bago po lang ako. Right? I'm still new. See, I understand. Right? Let them do it, let them do it first, you know? I'm good, or I'm still new, so let them do it. We have to remember, brothers and sisters, to share our three T's. Do you know what your three T's are? 
What are they? Say it. Time, talent, treasure. Time, talent, treasure. That's right. The three T's. We have to always be able to share that. Our time, talent, and treasure. This can sometimes make us no longer trust our leaders. Okay? This fearful humility. It can make us no longer trust our leaders' anointing. Even in our own ministry. Right? And even in our own anointing, we don't, we, we don't even trust our own anointing anymore because we are so scared or we think we're not worthy of sharing our gifts. We can even adopt some kind of a pick and, pick and choose or pick my service mentality, right? Even when it's time to transition out of SFC, brothers and sisters, to another ministry, we do it on our terms only sometimes. Right? We do it on our terms only. Oh, I'll, I'll transition when uh, so-and-so will transition with me. Right? Or I will go to CSC when he gets engaged. Okay? I remember when I transitioned into CSC, I kind of had this fearful humility. It was a little bit different. Um, uh, Cheryl and I, uh, we got married in 2008. Okay, so this year is our 10 year anniversary. We're celebrating our 10 year anniversary this year. And when we transitioned, uh, when we got married and we transitioned to CFC, we joined the CLP right away. Okay, and back then, we didn't have to go through all the talks. It was only talk seven and 11 we had to do. Okay, so when we attended our CLP uh, and our graduation, our, our dedication, you know, it was nice, you know, we, we had a worship, and then we were praying over the food, we were about the fellowship, and whatnot, and we were lined up, and we get approached by the family ministry head of the area. And they said, hey bro, congratulations, you know, we're happy for you. And they pulled us aside, bro, can we talk to you? I'm like, sure. And I thought they wanted to tell us, you know, you know, like, you know, CFC is gonna be good for you, da da da, this and that. But instead he goes, bro, can you be the SFC coordinator? I was like, what? I like just graduated like five seconds ago. You are asking me to do this? But I didn't say that. I said, I looked at Cheryl, I looked at my wife and we were like, okay, you know? But in our head, we already had the mentality of, we can't wait till we're in CFC so we can finally be in a regular household and just be members, right? be members and enjoy the formation and be participants because serving in the family ministries uh, especially as a full-time worker you're always running events right you're always running events you're doing talks you're doing this you're doing that so it would have been a nice change of pace if you could just sit down and just listen right and just listen and be uh, served right that was my mentality but at the same time too brothers and sisters I forgot that also Maybe they were asking because God knew we had the gifts to be able to serve in a different capacity as well, right? So we ended up joining uh, the family ministry household. So we weren't really in the regular CFC household, like CFC mainstream serving in there or part of the household. And that was back in 2008. We didn't get integrated into CFC until mm, 2015, no, 2014. All right, four years ago. That was the first time we actually were able to enjoy CFC. And if you think about that time, we didn't really get to enjoy the formation, the MERs and all these things. Um, and if it was any other, I guess, any other couple, they probably would have got, they would have gotten upset already and they, they would have just lie low or whatever or not be active anymore. But um, we were very, very much excited to finally be in CFC, and we've been serving in, main, in CFC, mainstream CFC since 2014. We became household heads, and then this year, uh, we just became unit heads of one of the chapters in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in my area. So we're really, really excited to be serving in CFC now, and we realize that we, have, we also have a gift to share with CFC as well, all right? So don't be afraid to share your gifts, brothers and sisters, because you all possess gifts to serve God. Amen?
next one is I have done a lot. Man, I'm sweating up here. Now I know what shock meant. You know, it's really shock. I have done a lot. Or a diffuse service. Otherwise known as this gift costs a lot. We could, we could, we'd be saying that this gift costs a lot. Who here knows the story of Martha and Mary when Jesus uh, visited their home? You guys know that story? When Jesus came in to visit Martha and Mary, um, Martha was so excited and she decided to, you know, get the place ready. So she started to clean and cook and do all these things to make sure Jesus is, uh, Jesus was ready to come in and his stay would be comfortable and would be uh, a good, you know, be hospitable. But what was Mary doing? Do you remember? Mary just sat at his feet, right? When Jesus entered, Mary just sat at his feet. <laughs> hey, okay, stop. So, so Mary was there just at Jesus' feet and Martha was stressing out and she was probably sweating like I am right now and just going here and going there and she was getting all upset and she goes to Jesus, do you remember what she said to Jesus? Yo Jesus! She, she didn't say yo, but she's like Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! Can you tell my sister to help me out here? I'm paraphrasing, it doesn't say like that in the Bible, okay? But Jesus, can you help me out? Can you ask her to help me out here? I'm, I'm stressing out here, I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, she's not doing anything, right? She's being lazy, pretty much is what she's trying to say. And Jesus, what did Jesus say to Martha? Martha, 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 right? Martha, 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 right? And she said, he said, Mary chose the better part, okay? And what's the better part? What was the better part that Jesus was talking about? You're just happy, man. I don't know whether to dance or what, I don't know. But he told him, he told, he told the better part that Mary was doing was listening, being present with Jesus. Just being present, present with Jesus. Sometimes we focus on the sacrifices we have made. Okay? In this mentality, the few service. We focus on the sacrifices that we have made versus the blessings that we have gained. Okay? We focus on the sacrifices we have made versus the blessings we have gained. We serve not because of love, but because of the affirmation we get from others. Right? Oh, bro, you're so good. Or sis, you're so inspiring. You know? We like that affirmation, right? Sometimes we serve because of that. We tend to think that we should serve, serve, serve so that God will love us, right? We think that we should serve, serve, serve so God will love us. But we have to remember, brothers and sisters, that God doesn't love us because we serve, serve, serve. God loves us because he, we, are, we, are, we are who we are. He loves us regardless, amen? He loves us regardless. Regardless of our past or whatever we can give, whatever talent we have, He loves us. And just the way you are, alright? Tell the person beside you, God loves you just the way you are. God loves you just the way you are. Some of us leaders in the community sometimes take on a lot of tasks in this mentality, okay? Some of us leaders take on a lot of tasks, but later on complain about the things they are doing the whole time they are doing it. You know, like Martha. She's doing all these things, but at the same time, she's not doing it out of love. She's just complaining while she's doing it, right? She's getting frustrated and frustrated. Who here has ever felt like that before? Serving with a complaining heart. And looking at the other people, you know, not doing anything, sitting around, and you're stacking chairs, and you're doing things, and you're looking at the person, and they're laughing and joking, taking pictures, and you're still, you're mopping, you know, after the CLP or whatever event it is. You're getting so, like, more, more mad every time you look at, 
you, you look at them just having fun, right? Doing all these things, brothers and sisters, you know, constantly doing all these things can make us physically and spiritually tired to the point where we forget why we are serving in the first place. When we do these things, we can sometimes lose sight of why we are serving in the first place. All of this makes us forget and neglect our pastoral needs, right? Serving, 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 doing all these things can sometimes forget that we also need to be pastored, right? And sometimes we neglect that because we're so focused on the service. We don't attend households, we don't attend mass, we don't go to confession anymore, you know? We're just doing service, service, service all the time. And that's that Martha mentality when we kick in it and when we kick in. But remember what Jesus said to Martha, Mary chose the better part and Jesus also wants us to choose the better part and that's just to be present with him in everything that we do. Amen? Next one is, this is a big one. The I am entitled to this kind of mentality, all right? Self-entitlement. Kind of like saying like, I deserve gifts in return. Do you remember the video they showed earlier? Not the awkward one that I was coming out with, but the one before that. They were taking selfies, you know. Brothers and sisters, we live in a selfie generation, okay? We live in a selfie generation. There is not one person here who has not experienced a selfie before. Either taking one or being part of one, right? We live in a selfie generation. It's always about us, right? It's always about us. It's always us. I'm the victim, right? I'm the victim. I'm the one who got hurt. I'm not getting pastored. My household doesn't call me. No. I'm tired. I'm this. I'm that. No. I deserve this. I deserve that. Kind of deal. Right? As we grow in the Lord, our sense of gratitude also grows as well. But sometimes our gratefulness turns into entitlement. So we, like I said, we are living in a selfie generation, not just pictures, but also self-entitlements where we believe we deserve certain privileges, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna break down or highlight five things of the self-entitlements. The first one is entitled to answers, okay? Entitled to answers. We feel God needs to answer us right away sometimes. Who's ever felt that before? When you pray, you feel like, God, you have to answer me right away. Who's ever felt that? Raise your hand. Yeah, I think we've all felt that. We feel like, God, I've been praying for you for an hour in adoration, just you and me, and you haven't answered me in like four days. I want to answer now. In our service, and even in the community, we expect answers to certain questions that we have, right? Sometimes we expect answers right away about things in the community. Why do we do this in SFC? Or why do we do that in SFC? Or do you have this material? Or do you have that material? Can we have it now, please? I've been emailing you a week. I've been emailing you two weeks. I have a, just a funny story to share about answers, entitled to answers, okay? Coming from the IM, we, re, we heavily rely on material from Manila, okay? And let's honor our full -time, SFC full-time pastor workers in Manila because they do such a great job in giving us this formation, right? And it's not easy, brothers and sisters, it's not easy, all right? But coming from another part of the world, we think it is easy, right? And I'm guilty of that. Every year we have a conference and we rely on the material from them to come to us to run our conference. 
And last year, our conference happened. Uh, it was at Ime Catholicos. I know some of you guys wore the shirts. And I am, the I Am Catholic conference. And it was great, it was awesome. And we were preparing, you know, we, we kind of had an idea what it was. We knew the title, that's for sure. But we didn't have the material, the PFO, like the talks. Okay? We didn't have the talks. And obviously, without the sessions, we can't really do much during the conference, right? So we were waiting and waiting, all right? And I think it was, you know, we've been emailing, hey bro, or whatever, sis, uh, do you have the materials yet? We're like, yeah, we'll give you it on this date. We're like, yeah, we're gonna get it, cool. And then we're like, okay, bro, sorry, um, it's this date, do you have the materials yet? Are you gonna email tonight? Oh yeah, yeah, bro, um, it'll be sent soon, soon, soon. Okay, cool. And that, I'll, tell them, I'll tell the rest of the team, yeah, it's gonna be soon, guys. And then more weeks pass, and conference is coming closer, and we're starting to sweat, we're starting to stress, we're starting to get worried, you know, and I'm, I'm calling Queen Oli, and like, Queen Oli, what's going on? You know? And basically, I think we didn't get the materials probably like, maybe two weeks before the conference, or maybe less. One week, was it one week? Yeah, was it one week? I think it was one week before the conference or something. But brothers and sisters, I'm not here, I'm not saying this to like call them out or anything. I'm not, okay? Don't get me wrong, all right? What I'm trying to say is, they don't have to answer, like, I'm not entitled to the answers, all right? And if you think about it, when the materials came, the conference still happened and the conference ran as if they gave us the materials like five months in advance, okay? So it just shows that God's timing is always perfect and it's really God's spirit that leads us, all right? Even though we think that we're entitled to the answers right away, and yes, sometimes it's stressful, you know? It's still gonna happen regardless because God is with us God's faithfulness is with us, and He would not abandon us and let the conference be a disaster. Alright? So, bro, it's okay. You can bring it next this year, one week if you want. It's okay. I trust you. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, man. I don't uh, actually recommend it. Alright? But, we're very, very grateful, again, for all the work that our full-time pastor workers do with regards to materials and they're so awesome and it really does empower and form our single men and women here. So let's give it up for the Lord and give it up for them as well, you know, for God using them. Next is entitled to blessings. Okay, entitled to blessings. This is when we are focused more about what we have given versus what we have received. We often think we deserve more or we deserve a specific blessing in return. We sometimes think that since we have done this or that for God, He will hook us up with a big time blessing. Okay? Who's, ever been, who's ever felt like that before? Right? I think some of us have felt like that before. We sometimes even use service as a way to make deals with the Lord. We'll sometimes say, Lord, I will say yes to being your CLP team head if you bless me with this good job, okay? Or I will say yes to being a household head and after I say yes, Lord, you're gonna give me a GG, right? And the crazy thing is, this is the crazy thing, brothers and sisters, that sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes the Lord will entertain your bargaining. And he will bless you with that good job. And he will bless you with that GG. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. He will bless you with that good job. He will bless you with that GG. But then when it comes down to it, you're inactive. Right? I've been a coordinator for many years and I have 
seen so many SFCs that have been blessed with GGs and good jobs. And when it came down to serving, after a month of being with their GG, they're gone. And I scratched my head, I'm like, bro, you were crying to me, asking, I want a boy, I want a, I want a boy for him. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. I want a girlfriend, bro, you know, he's crying, da da da. Like, don't worry, bro, you know, just serve and the Lord will bless you. He's like, really, really, bro, really? Yeah, just serve, you know, say yes, say, okay, I'll do it. And then finally, the Lord blesses him and he's not active anymore. Right? Or you get a good job, you get blessed with a good job, and you use that job as an excuse saying, I have no time to serve anymore because I'm busy with my work. Our God is so gracious, so loving, that He will entertain our bargaining, but yet we can't even, we can't even keep the end of our bargain. How sad is that? Who here knows a brother or sister who bargains with the Lord often? Raise your hand. Who here knows a brother and sister or sister that have been really active, but when, but when they've been blessed, they're out. Doesn't that make you sad? Yeah, it makes me sad. It makes me even more sad when I see them walking at the mall, or doing something, you know? And then it's like, oh, you know? How's that blessing that you have, you know? How's that going for you? So entitled to blessings. The next one, brothers and sisters, is entitled to a position and the treatment and the perks that go with it, okay? So we have been blinded to think that position matters, right? Position matters, maybe in the corporate world, brothers and sisters, but here in our service, it doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter. The number of years we have been serving does not entitle us to a certain position. The number of years we have in service does not entitle us to a certain position. Or because you are the best guitar player doesn't mean that you can lead the music ministry. That doesn't mean it at all. Sometimes leaders would hold on to their positions for years. for years and years and when it's time to move on or do some other service we refuse because you're so caught up in the perks and advantages that you have from being that leader for so long right everyone knows kuya so-and-so because he's been a leader for 12 years still single let's pray for him you know or Ate so-and-so likes the attention because she's single, right? The perks and the badges. And those things, brothers and sisters, they're minor things, but those are things that creep into our service, into our minds too, right? That we are entitled to a certain position or a certain treatment, right? A certain treatment. Position doesn't matter here in SFC, brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you're a household head, uh, unit head, chapter head, music ministry head, doesn't matter. We all go to the same place. We all, we are all striving for the same place. Amen? We all bleed the same blood. Amen? We all get hurt the same way. Amen? Next one is entitled to a name or a title and the right respect it demands. So we have come to believe that in order for us to be respected, we need to have a certain title, okay? We become more concerned of what others think of us versus what we can do for the people around us. As in like, if you're the household head, like, I'm their household head, you have to listen to me guys, okay? So follow me, all right? Follow me and only me. Don't listen to them, follow me, I'm your household head, you know? And the title is so important to them. Sometimes they go to parties, you know, hi, I'm John, household head. Nice to meet you. 
John Hasselhoff. Oh. I'm John Chapman. Oh. Even like in random places, not even the community, you're going to the mall. Hi, John Hasselhoff. <laughs> John Chapterhead. Yeah, chapterhead. And everyone will be like, what's a Chapterhead? <laughs> right? You're so attached to the title. You can take the title if you want. Brothers and sisters, if you want, I'll make you a household head shirt. You can have it, you know, and take it home with you, right? But it doesn't matter here. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. You're not going to get any respect that way. Uh, we are entitled to a title, uh, to a name or title. The last one, brothers and sisters, is we are entitled to forgiveness. When pride enters our hearts, <coughs> admitting our faults becomes difficult. Amen? When we are prideful, admitting our faults, our wrongdoings is very difficult. What's worse is that when we do finally admit it, we think we are entitled to forgiveness right away. Forgiveness is given out of love, not out of entitlement or demand. Okay? Not out of entitlement or demand. Brothers and sisters, who here has ever hurt somebody and, you know, you were so prideful to admit that you were wrong and when you finally do admit it, you ask for that person for forgiveness, it took you so long, by the way, to finally admit that you were wrong. And you finally admit it and you say, hey bro, hey sis, you know what? Two years ago, I'm so sorry, I realized that I was wrong. Can you forgive me? No, I'm not gonna forgive you. Two years, man, you know? Two years, and you're telling me now that you're sorry? I'm gonna have to pray about this. And how do we feel? We feel butt hurt, right? We feel hurt. Like, ouch, you're so mean, man. Can't forgive me after two years? I'm not admitting my fault, you can't forgive me? Brothers and sisters, we are not entitled to forgiveness. Forgiveness has to be earned, okay? Forgive forgiveness has to be earned. If there is someone that you know that still you need to forgive or say sorry to, we should do it right away, okay? And if that person is ready to forgive you right then and there, then praise the Lord. If that person is not ready to forgive you till later down the road, praise the Lord as well. At least you knew you tried, all right? Or at least you knew that you were able to forgive, okay? These entitlements, brothers and sisters, that I mentioned, when not received, oftentimes makes us unhappy. It makes us upset. And eventually, it makes us inactive in serving the Lord. Okay? Everything that was mentioned are all ways we can lose our joy, brothers and sisters. These are the modern day joy robbers. Modern day joy robbers. Okay? So we have to ask ourselves, okay? I want us to ask ourselves this question. How have we guarded our joy? How have we guarded our joy? And what are we doing? Okay? Are we doing something to guard our joy? Have we guarded our joy? And are we doing something to guard our joy? At this time, brothers and sisters, I want you to pick a partner, okay? I don't want you to walk around because that'll take forever to someone around you, okay? Pick a partner, okay? Pick a partner, go. Grab his hand or her hand or don't clench hands like you like him or her. This is not the time to make moves. Just pick a partner. This is for discussion purposes. And I want you, I'll give you guys a couple of minutes to discuss with your partner which one of those things that I mentioned can you relate with the most? Okay? Which one of those things that I mentioned, those joy robbers, which one of those jo joy robbers can you relate to the most? Okay, and I'll give you a couple of minutes, right?